Good evening. I'm Richard Boone, and this is Playhouse 90. From Television City in Hollywood, Playhouse 90. Tonight starring Richard Boone, Kim Stanley, Jill Wills, Eula Bondi, Elizabeth Patterson, and guest star Charles Bickford. Playhouse 90. This portion brought to you by Johnson Wax, a household name the world over for 75 years. When a lemon turns yellow, it's ripe. When a banana turns yellow, that's good. But when a floor turns yellow, lady, you're using the wrong kind of wax. You need Clear, the new self-polishing floor wax that dries clear as glass. Won't yellow any floor. Ordinary wax is yellowish to start with. Clear is white. Ordinary wax turns yellow with age, like this tinted glass. But clear, made with Miracle Plexon, dries clear as this clean glass, never yellows. With clear on your floors, the colors you like are the colors you see, and your floors are beautifully protected under a sparkling, colorless shine that preserves the true beauty of your floor colors and keeps them looking new. Wouldn't you rather have clear on all your floors? Clear, created by Johnson's Wax. It never yellows. There comes to the fortunate actor sometime in his career a role that is more than just a good part. Combined with the role itself are a number of other factors, almost intangible, but it's a combination of things and people that results in a circumstance of such harmony that it touches the actor in a very singular way, and he never forgets it. For me, such a role was Stonewall Jackson Fentry in William Faulkner's Tomorrow. Douglas's son's car. What's he doing around here this time in the morning? Well, now, it looks like he's coming to see us. What do you want with us? Probably ask some questions about Jackson Fentry. Don't you tell him nothing, Pruitt. Yes, sir. Hi. Hi, Thorn. Morning. How you been feeling, Miss Pruitt? Pretty well. You're looking very well. Thank you. Can't complain. This is my nephew, Charles. He's my partner, aren't you, boy? Hi, yes, boy. Sir. Sit down, son. He likes riding out here in the country with me. I, uh, I suppose you folks know I'm a lawyer now. Yes, we heard about him. Well, I, uh, tried my first case yesterday. And I lost it. And I'm trying to figure out why. Seems a month ago, uh, Buck Thorpe ran off with H.T. Bookwright's daughter, and Bookwright uh, went after him. Thorpe pulled a gun, and Bookwright killed him. Now, everybody knows that uh, Buck Thorpe was a wild bully, and uh, if Bookwright hadn't have killed him, somebody else probably would have sooner or later, so nobody figured that any jury in this county would ever convict Bookwright. Well, the jury didn't convict him, but they didn't free him either. There was one man that voted against freeing him. And I hung the jury, and the case is going to have to be retried next month. 
You know who the man was who hung my jury? Your neighbor, Jackson Fentry, and I just can't figure it out. Jackson Fentry was born and raised and lived all his life out here in the country, 30 miles from Frenchman's Bend where the killing took place. And he swore under oath that he had never seen Bookwright before, and I could look at him and tell that he never had enough time off from hard work to learn how to lie in. So I was just wondering that maybe you folks could tell me... No, no, I'm telling you, Thornton. You want to know anything about Jackson Fentry? You go talk to him, Mr. Paul. Expect you can find him home right now. Yeah, yeah, I, I expect I can. You think they'd tell me anything? No, sir. Yeah, that's just what I figured. Look, I don't mean any harm to anyone by coming out here today. It's just that this was my first case, and it's very important to me to find out why I lost it. If I did something wrong in my presenting of it, or if no matter what I did, good or bad, Jackson Fentry would have still voted to convict Bookwright. Now, if you choose to tell me, I'll never let it get by me to anyone else. Pruitt. Yes, sir. Tell the boy what you know. He don't mean any harm to Jackson Fentry. Yes, sir. Did you pass Jackson's farm coming out here? Yes, sir. It's poor land, even in looks. I expect so. But his pa and his ma worked it and made a living for themselves. Paid the taxes, raised their family, and they owed no man. I don't see how they'd done it, but they did. And Jackson was a helping from the time he was big enough to reach up to the plow hands until he was 25 and already looking 40. Asking odds of nobody. Not married, not nothing. Him and his Paul living alone and doing their own washing and cooking. One night about 22 or three years ago, in the summer of 1902, as well as I can remember, he came over here looking for me. Through it! Miss Pruitt, is your son at home? No, he's gone into town. What'd you want him for? Well, I got me a job over at the sawmill at Frenchman's Bend. Mm -hmm. I traded a man to help my daddy out while I'm gone. And I wonder if you and your son would be kind enough to look in on him now and again, be sure he's all right while I'm gone. Well, sure will. Well, thank you. How long are you going to be gone? I don't know. Uh, good luck. Jackson Fentry stayed at that sawmill two years. I remember he came home the first Christmas and he visited with his papa. Next day he got up before daylight and walked back to that sawmill. When the next Christmas come, we was expecting him home again. Merry Christmas, Fentry. Merry Christmas, Asham. Pa wants to know if you're going home for Christmas again this year. I am. I'm leaving as soon as I can finish eating this. How far is your farm? 30 miles. How you get there? I walk it. When will you be back? Day after Christmas. Same as last year, huh? Don't you get... Lonesome all by yourself out here this way? No. Uh, do you ever go hunting? I hunt some. Well, when you get back, maybe you and me could go hunting together sometime. All right. So long. So long.
Ben Quicksaw Mill. I, I'm the watchman out here in the wintertime when the mill is shut down. I, I heard you when I came out of the boiler room door and you sounded like you was in pain. Are you in pain? <laughs> well, how long have you been here? Oh, I don't know. I know that walking down the road back yonder. Remember, I was feeling dizzy. I said to myself, I hope I don't faint. Oh, I guess I did. What day is it? Christmas Eve. Is it morning or afternoon? Well, it's a late morning. Oh. Then I, I haven't been here too long. <laughs> it was early in the morning on Christmas Eve. I started this way. Oh. Hit. Mm. oh! Mind your head. Mind your head. Oh! I don't know. I reckon I better be getting on. Oh, I'm sorry. I... Oh! I guess I... I'm just going to have to rest just a little bit longer. I haven't quite got my strength back. Well, lady, uh, would, would you let me help you into the boiler room? You can rest there by the fire. It's raw and cold out here. Well, I thank you. I it has been a cold winter, isn't it? Yes, ma'am, it has. <sighs> You know, there's ice when I passed by the ditches this morning. I said to myself, oh, Jack Frost has been here. Yes, ma'am, he has. Oh. Now, you just have to make it to that door right there. Can you make that? Yes, sir, I can. All right. Have, have you been here long? Well, over a year, it be two years in the spring. You're, you're home around here? Well, no, ma'am. I was raised on a cotton farm uh, 30 miles from here that I worked with my daddy. Oh. My mama is dead, and my daddy's on that farm uh, alone now. You from around here? Oh, sort of, on and off. My husband never did care much for this county. He's always trying to find work someplace else, but we always have to come back. You're uh, on your way home now. Uh, no, sir. Well, was you going into Jefferson? No, sir. I wasn't going no place. I was just going. <laughs> Just go. <gasps> Your husband dead? Oh, uh, no, sir. Oh, uh, my husband just disappeared when he found out about the baby coming. <laughs> I stayed on, um, with the people where we were living at the time. But last week, two of their children got sick and my husband's out of work and I just figured it'd be easier on them if I left. So I got up this morning, they were all asleep and I just took off. <laughs> Don't you have any people? Oh, yes. I have a papa. 
and three brothers. Well, can't you go on home to them? Oh, uh, no, sir. You see, uh, they asked me to leave and never come back when I married my husband, and I don't ever intend to go back there. But when they know... I don't ever intend to go back there. My papa has his pride. Well, I've got mine. <laughs> you... You live here by yourself? Yes, ma'am. Oh. You're not you're not a married man. No, ma'am. I never really care very much for the winter time, did you? No, ma'am. No, I didn't. Oh. You know, it seems to me like every winter I get sick. <laughs> Won't come over to the place I stay in. She said to me. You look sick to me. You ought to see a doctor. I said, well, there's nothing wrong with me that a little sunshine wouldn't cure. <laughs> Would you like me to put some more wood on that fire? Oh, no, no. It's, it's just fine. Oh, I do love the sunshine. I said to myself this morning when I left the house, I'm going, if my strength holds out, till I get to a place where it's warm. And the sun is shining. Well, my strength didn't hold out very long, did it? <laughs> <laughs> you that wind was cold walking into the way I had to. He just cut right through you like a knife. Knew no mercy. <laughs> now, look at that. What is the matter with me? I just think about that wind and I start to tremble and shake. Look at that. <laughs> Lady, why don't you come over here and rest on the bed? You can't rest good in a chair like that. Oh, no, I can't stay. Well, just for a minute. Well, all right. But I married a Eubanks. <laughs> you know, if I have a little girl, I'm going to name her Vesta after my mama. If I have a boy, I think I'll. I don't know. I was going to name him after my husband, but now I don't know. up that winter, because I grieve so. 
the wind would blow around my house, and I'd, I'd think it was my mama calling to me. And I'd answer, call back to her, ask her where she's hiding. No more after that. After that, I vowed to myself that nothing would ever break my heart again. And it didn't. Not the longest time of a time. Sir, let's change this sorry scene. No sloppy hose, no changing clothes. With Holiday, the car washing cream with the built-in shine, Holiday goes on a damp sponge full strength, is never diluted, washes, deep cleans, and polishes all in one easy operation. After it dries, just wipe it off, and your car has a shine that looks a foot deep. Try Holiday, America's most popular car washing idea. I'm a dust cloth. Before Pledge, I just pushed dust around. Now I'm getting somewhere. Dusting with Pledge does get you somewhere because Johnson's Pledge gives you waxed beauty instantly as you dust. Just spray and dust. Pledge cleans and waxes as you dust. Picks up dirt, smudges, fingerprints. Gives a real wax shine that dries instantly. Get Johnson's Pledge! For waxed beauty instantly as you dust. feel better? Well, yes, I do, but uh, I'm ashamed and mortified. You ought to wake me up or gone on off. Well, I didn't have any place to go. Well, aren't you going to your farm for Christmas? No, ma'am. I thought you... No, I changed my mind. What made you do that? Well, I just changed it. Still cold out yonder? Yes, it is. Why don't you stay on here the rest of the night? Oh. Well, I could make a pallet for myself right here on the floor by the stove. But I wouldn't want to put you out any. Well, you wouldn't put me out any. Have you had your supper? No, ma'am. Can I fix it for you? No, uh, you stay on in the bed. Well, I want to do something. I can get it. While you were asleep, I went to the store over at Frenchman's Bend 
And I bought you this. I thought you might like it. I declare it's hard candy. Merry Christmas. Oh, thank you. Merry Christmas to you, too. <laughs> I'll fix you something to eat now. Will you eat it? Oh, no, thank you. I'm, I'm still not hungry. I think I'll just have a piece of my Christmas candy. <laughs> What are you crying for? I don't know. Oh. I'm just tired and nervous, I guess. I've been crying a lot lately. I don't mean nothing. I stopped just as soon as I stopped. You see? You know, I never used to cry at all. When I was a little girl, people used to accuse me of being hard-hearted because nothing could get me to cry. I'd just say, well, if that's the way it's got to be, that's the way it's got to be. But lately, all that's changed. You know, somebody come up to me and say, good morning, or good evening, I cry. Or uh, ask me what time it is. I just cry. Did you ever hear anything like that? I never did used to talk so much either. I used to be able to go a whole day without saying one single word. Lately, I just can't stand it silent or quiet. You know what worries me most about death? No. That's silent in the grave. No, no one to talk to. Nobody talk to you. <laughs> oh. It's so good. <laughs> Would you like some? No, thank you. Who do you talk to out here when you get lonesome? Well, nobody. There's nobody out here in the wintertime but me. Don't you miss having somebody to talk to? Sometimes. Why don't you stay on here until after your baby is born? I got food enough for the both of us, and it's warm here and dry. Mr. Fentry. Well, you uh, don't have to answer me right away. I'll get some more wood for this fire, and you think on it, and when I come back, you let me know what you've decided.
even colder out than it has been. Did you mean what you said about my staying on here? Yes, ma'am. Well, then I'll stay. Because to tell you the truth, I don't have the strength to go. You know, there's a wonderful feeling of pleasure and relaxation you get from the true taste of fine tobaccos. But all too often that feeling is disturbed by harsh flavor or hot taste, two of the most common complaints among smokers. Well, it doesn't happen here in Kent, because Kent, with the Micronite filter, refines away harsh flavor, refines away hot taste, makes the taste of a cigarette mild. And it's interesting to know that most people who change to Kent do so for this very reason. Oh, some of them may describe it a bit differently. They say their former brand tasted too strong or irritating or rough. What they're really saying is harsh flavor and hot taste. If that's what disturbs you when you smoke, try a package of Kent. And when you discover that Kent refines away harsh flavor and refines away hot taste, then you'll feel better about smoking with the taste of Kent. This portion of Playhouse 90 has been brought to you by... Johnson's Wax, a household name the world over for 75 years. After station identification, we shall return to Playhouse 90. Brought to you by Bufferin, a modern drug for relief from headache pain. Kent cigarettes, Kent with a Micronite filter. And Tide, America's favorite wash day product. What's the greatest cause of headache? Doctors say, tension. 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 When things go wrong, tension can build up and up. Suddenly, you've got a miserable headache. Nerves tighten. Stomach feels uneasy, queasy. You need Bufferin. Bufferin relieves headache, tight nerves, jittery stomach fast. Works twice as fast as aspirin for millions. Here's why. We drop the most expensive aspirin, then this combination of ingredients product into ordinary stomach acid. As you can see, not much happens. But instantly, you see Bufferin's pain reliever go into solution. Acts twice as fast as aspirin for millions. Gives long-lasting relief, too. And spreading quickly to calm your jittery stomach are tiny particles of Bufferin with dialmanate. Only Bufferin adds these stomach-soothing antacids to aspirin. Stomach calmed, nerves relaxed. And Bufferin relieved my headache fast. When stress and strain cause headache pain, take Bufferin. What are you doing out of the bed? Well, uh... I feel better than that. Oh, my. It's warmer today. Yes, it is. Hmm. You know something? I have been here for a month. Month and three days. And you ought to be back inside. It's still raw and cold out here. Oh, well. I'll stay out a minute. The sun is so pretty. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Marry me, Sarah. I can't marry you. I told you that. I got a husband someplace. He deserted you. Well, I can't help that. He's still my husband in the eyes of the law. Oh, uh, pardon me, Fincher. I didn't know you had company. Oh, no. Excuse me. I, I think I better go on in. Who's she? My wife. Since when? You didn't have her out here Christmas Eve when I was here. You never mentioned you had a wife. She's my wife. You want us to leave? Now, what I want you to leave for? I don't care what you do out here. Then come in a spy. You can have 20 wives out here for all I care. Just come to get you to go hunting. Some other time. All right. Oh, uh, Pa says to tell you to pick out the site of where you want your house. You and me can start building it this spring. Well, I know where I want it. Well, maybe one day soon when it's warm, I'll get him out here and look it over. All right. Patrick. Oh, I think you better go get Mrs. Julia. I think it's my time. Yes, ma'am, I will. Asham! Yeah. Asham, will you do me a favor? Sure. You go over and get Miss Hewley, the midwife, and tell her to come out here right away? Yeah, I'd be glad to. Well, thank you. I got Asham to go. Who is he? That young man was just here. His daddy owns a sawmill. Oh, so you can see me out here? I reckon so. Did he ask you who I was? Yes, ma'am. What'd you tell him? I told him that you were my wife. Oh. You cold again? Yes, I am all of a sudden. <laughs> Isom said that his daddy wanted me to pick up the place where I want the house to be, and I said that I already knew where I wanted it, and when you're stronger, I'll, I'll show you. Oh, I'd like to see that. You're afraid of what? I'm afraid I'm going to die. From childbirth? You're not going to die from that. Lots of women have I'm not afraid been. of childbirth. Well, what then? I don't know. You're going to get up from here feeling fine, carrying this baby just wore you out. Ow! Oh, Fancy, I ain't had much in my life. That's the truth. Just work and hunger and pain and I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Now you listen to me. You listen to me. You are not going to die. I am not going to let you die. You hear me? You hear me? Now you... Rest, you're gonna need your strength when Miss Hewley gets here. You rest, try and sleep. You don't leave me if I sleep. No, oh, ma'am. Oh. You know, in the summertime, it's warm in the day. And in the night. Some of that old sun just burns and cooks the pain and the tiredness right out of you. You don't leave me. No, ma'am. I'm not ever going to leave you. Unless you ask me to. Never. Never, never.
Ja, wie ich froh, Mom. Seven shirts, 14 shirts, two whole weeks worth. And now you can wash them all unbeatably clean, free, thanks to Tide's special sale. Yes, for a limited time, you save three cents on the usual price of regular size Tide, five cents on the usual price of giant size Tide. And what you save on the giant size means you get 14 shirts, two whole weeks worth, washed free. Big savings, you bet. But best of all, you're saving on Tide, the detergent you just can't beat for cleaning. You see, your machine will clean its very best when you wash with Tide, because nothing outcleans Tide's hard-working suds in these washers. So buy Tide today. Get your clothes unbeatably clean and save money to boot. Five cents off giant size Tide, three cents off regular size Tide. Available at most stores now. Baby's here. The fine boy. Thank you. I'm worried about the mama, though. She isn't doing too well. I ain't going to lie to you, Mr. Fentry. I think she's in serious condition. She's asked me straight out how she was, and I told her I didn't think she was doing too well. She asked me to tell you that. Yes, ma'am. She says she's afraid she's going to die and that she won't never get up off in that bed in there. I hate to tell you this, Mr. Fentry, but I don't think she will neither. Was it having the baby? Oh, no. She was sick long for the baby. No, oh, she's, she just played out, seems to me. She wants to see you now. Yes, ma'am. Hewley said. Well, I'd 
guess since it's a boy, it don't matter whether it's pretty or not, huh? Hmm. Light complected, like me. It's a fine looking baby. Hello, son. Welcome. Can I hold the baby? Sure. Well, now, he is small, isn't he? Anything does happen to me. Would you take care of the baby? Nothing's gonna happen to you. If it does. Well, if it would, then you could rest easy. I'll take care of this baby. Like he was your own? Like he was my own. Thank you. Sentry. Yes, ma'am. You know, when my husband left, he told me that I'd never see him again or find him again, so not to try. And I've been thinking, how can you divorce a man you can't find? So if, if you still want to marry me, I'm willing. I want to marry you. You think you could find somebody to marry us right away? Oh, yes, ma'am. Preacher Whitehead's seven miles from here. Could you go get him? Yes, ma'am, I will. Oh. Will you hurry? Yes, ma'am. you have a papa and three brothers and live with them on a farm back yonder? Well, yes, ma'am. Don't you think that they ought to be sent for at a time like this? I don't want them to know anything about me. Found these flour sacks over there. I split them in two for you. When Mr. Fentry comes back, I'll show him how they can be used for diapers. All right. Now, let me have the baby. I'll put him in this box over here. Mr. Fentry and me fixed up for a crib. Thank you. Now, you try and get some sleep. Preacher here. Hello, oh, Mrs. Hello, oh, Preacher. Oh, thanks. Do 
Dearly beloved, we are gathered here together in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Do you, Jackson Fentry, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. And do you, Mrs. What was the name? Eubanks. Sarah Eubanks. Sarah Eubanks? Do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? Yes, I do. Then I pronounce you man and wife, and may peace be with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. never seen snow. I don't know what it looks like or feels like, but in my dream, I kept saying I'm drowning in the snow, drowning in the cold. I kept calling to you to save me. And didn't I save you? I don't know. I want you to uh, name the baby. You want to? Well, thank you. I'd like to. You know, while I was bringing the preacher here, I went right by the place where our house is going to be, and it's going to have three rooms in it. Three rooms and a porch for us to sit on. And around it, I'm going to put some pretty trees. A chinaberry tree. Oh. And a hackberry tree. And a oak tree. Do you think of a name for the baby yet? No, ma'am. I've been studying on it, but I haven't thought of one yet. Would you get the baby, please? Oh, yes, ma'am. Are you all right? Yes, please, get me my baby. Sarah? I got the baby here for you. Maybe here for Miss Hewley. Preacher? She's dead, Mr. Fentry. No, ma'am. She is not dead. I am not going to let her die. I'm going to save her. You can't save her now, Mr. Fentry. She's dead. I don't care. I 
promise you I'd raise him like he was my own and I will. Son, your mama is dead. I'm going to raise you and see to you. I'll be your papa and your mama. And you'll never want nor do without while I got breath left in my bones. There, that's your final lesson. Now for your first meal. Get them behind the knee, boy. They hate that. Yow! Now in the earlobe, it's tender there. Yow! That's my boy. That's fun, Unc, but he said a bad word. What's that? Raid. Raid? Yes, Raid, house and garden bug killer. For both indoors and outdoors. Raid hunts bugs down like radar. Sweeps flies and mosquitoes from the air. Attacks roaches and ants as they crawl. And kills them dead. Kills all kinds of bugs indoors. Outdoors, Raid house and garden bug killer wipes out insects that attack your flowering plants. Even protects evergreens. So get Raid. It smells good, but it really kills them dead. Created by Johnson's Wax. This portion of Playhouse 90 has been brought to you by Bufferin, a modern drug for relief from headache pain. Kent cigarettes, Kent with the Micronite filter, and Tide, America's favorite wash day product. After station identification, we shall return to Playhouse 90. This portion of Playhouse 90 is brought to you by Zest, now new and improved. Star Kiss Tuna, the all-prime tuna. And Push Button Lilt, the only foam home permanent. Subject, waving. Simple now. Finger, button, new lilt. Push, foam. Easy. Milk. Push. Foam. Neat. Old-fashioned waving lotion drips all over. Lilt foam doesn't. Lilt. Push. Foam. Sinks in. Saturates deep. Wave soft. Crush it. Springs back. Remember, finger, button, new lilt, new round package, first foam home permanent. I'm home for good. I'm glad, son. But, Papa, this is Isham Quick. His daddy owns the sawmill where I was working. Howdy, Mr. Fendry. Howdy. I was looking for you on Christmas Day, Fendry. Yes, sir. Well, I couldn't get home on Christmas Day. Who does that belong to? Me? It's my baby. I got married. Where's your wife? She died. Now, this is your baby. Yes, sir. Boy or girl? Boy. What's your name him? Well, I thought I'd name him after the two generals you served under, Jackson and Longstreet, if it's all right with you. That's fine with me. Come here to me. 
Jackson and Longstreet Fancy. Well, you don't need me for nothing else, so I'll be getting on back home. I sure do thank you. That's all right. Good luck. And good luck to you. You good baby, son? Yes, sir. How you been, Papa? Pretty well. How's that man I hired to help you been? He's all right. I guess that's the reason I didn't see you Christmas. Yes, sir. I'm sorry I didn't get to meet your wife, son. What was her name? Mary. Well, she died. Well, she just died. She was poorly when I met her. None of us Fentries have luck with their wives. Your mama died when she wanted 30. My mama never lived to see 34. How old was your wife when she died, son? Well, I don't know. I never asked her. Small. I've forgotten how small they was. How are you going to feed him? Well, I got that goat out there for his milk. You think we can raise him? Yes, sir. I think we can. Well, if he's yawn, he's welcome. You better keep him in my room. I'll sleep in here. Sir, as soon as he's big enough to come along, I'll start helping on the farm again. You still got that man I hired to help you? Yes, I have. While I was gone, I asked the Pruitts to look in on you now and again. Did they do it? They did. Most every day, one or t'other of them comes snooping around. What'd you say your wife's name was, son? Sally? What, the name you said before? Wasn't it? No, sir. I was sworn before you said it was Mary. Well, most likely I did, sir. Uh, see, she had a kind of a double name. Sally Mary, and sometimes I called her one and sometimes the other, but her name was Sally Mary. Sally Mary what? Smith. So people live up there around Frenchman's Bend? No, sir. They were from the northern part of the state. Mr. Fentry! That's Mrs. Pruitt. You want her to know you're here? I don't care, Papa. Come in, Mrs. Pruitt. Oh, hello, Fentry. Why, hello, Jackson. Was that you come driving up in that buggy? Yes, ma'am. Well, welcome home. Thank you. Uh, I see you got a new goat out in the yard, Mr. Fentry. That's Jackson's. He brought it home from Frenchman Ben to feed his baby. His baby? Married him a wife when he was working up there at the sawmill. She died when the baby was born. He brought it home to raise. What? Well, where is your baby, Jackson? Yonder, in the box. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. How, how old is the baby? Three days. Uh, what was the name of your wife, son? Mary Sally Smith. She come from around here? No, she was from downstate. So sorry to hear about it. Baby hasn't got any clothes on. Well, no, ma'am, I didn't have any for him. I, I'm going to have to make him so. Well, you got any diapers for him? Miss Hewley, the midwife over at Frenchman's Bend, showed me how to tear these flower sacks in half, and I've been using them for diapers. I'll make you some diapers and bring them over this well, evening. thank you. I don't want you to bother none. It's no bother. If there's anything at all I can do, you just let me know. And, um... Son, why don't you just let me take the baby on home with me? No, thank you. At least until it can be weaned. Uh, thank you. I wouldn't care to do that. Well, you can stay at my house, too, if you uh, want thank to. Thank you very much, but I can make out. Well, all right. Call me if you change your mind. We will, Mrs. Boyd. We will. Son, you better get your wife's name straight. You told me it was Sally Mary Smith. You told Mrs. Pruitt it was Mary Sally Smith. Well, which one was it? 
It wasn't either. It was Sarah Eubanks. And she was from around Frenchman's Bend, but where exactly, I don't know. Well, why do you want to keep this secret? I'm not this baby's papa. I met his mother after his father had deserted her. She was sick, I took her into my house, cared for her. After this baby was born, we were married. And I promised her I would raise this baby as if it were my own. And I will, too. Well, that's fine, but uh, what if this baby's papa or your wife's people find out about him? Supposing they come here, try to take him away from you. Well, that ain't never gonna happen, Papa, because I ain't never gonna leave him or let him leave me until he's grown and there ain't nobody gonna take him away from me. Nobody. <laughs> oh, Jackson and Longstreet. Ooh, ooh, son. Ooh, son, Jackson Longstreet. Ooh. And Jackson Fentry raised that boy. I don't know how he was at sawmill. And he never had enough of a farm to find out if he's any good at farming. But he raised that boy all by himself. When he was old enough, he took him into the fields with him. Get those up by yourself. Come on, we'll help you. Here now. Looks like it's going to be a fine morning. Yep. Boy, mine's going to be three years old tomorrow, aren't you, boy? Yes, sir. <laughs> Good morning. How are you all this morning? Pretty fair. How are you, Jackson and Longstreet? She's our neighbor. Say hello, son. Hello. <laughs> now, I, I hope you're not going to mind what I've been doing, but I, uh, I had a little spare time, and I had some cloth I didn't need, so I thought I'd make some clothes for your little boy. Well, thank you. I hope you don't mind my interfering, but I know how much you have to do besides making it. Well, I don't mind that none, ma'am. I thank you for your trouble, and uh, we'll be getting on to work. Well, I... I, I hope he didn't hurt your feelings, Don. No. He wants to do everything for that boy himself. Sometimes I think he begrudges the earth itself what the boy has to eat to keep alive. Oh, I don't mind. I'm not sensitive. I... Well, I guess I better be getting on home and get to my own work. Howdy. Howdy. I'm the sheriff. Howdy. These three men are the kin of Sarah Eubanks. We've been told that you could give us some information. Oh, well, uh... She died near three years ago, right in yonder. You'll find a grave back yonder in the woods. I put a little wooden marker on the grave myself. Oh, thanks. So we're brothers. I'm Les. This is Bud. T.R. How to do? I'm Isham Quick. Uh, we were told my sister gave birth to a child out here. She did. Uh, do you know where the baby is? He's with his daddy. Oh, no, he ain't. His daddy's Leroy Eubanks. He deserted my sister before the child was born. We've taken care of him. Uh, we only found out about this two days ago. Well, now, I don't know anything about that. But I do know that right in yonder, she married Jackson Fentry, and there's witnesses to prove it. Uh, Brother Whitehead... Well, I don't care how many witnesses you have. She had a husband, a legal husband, so that marriage don't count for nothing. We want our own flesh and blood to raise ourselves. Well, you can't take that boy away from him. He taken that boy as his own when nobody come to claim him. He's raised that boy, clothed and fed him for three oh, years. Oh, we aim to do right about that, too, when we've seen the boy. Well, Mister, you can't just go up after three years. And he's and our the... kin. We want him. We aim to have him. We'll pay this man for his trouble and for what that boy cost him. Well, you're going to have to find him first. And I don't know where they've gone to. They just disappeared one day after your sister died. We were told at the store that you drove him away. In a buggy. Him and the baby and a nanny goat. Well, I don't know why anybody would want to... You might as well tell us if you know where they are. These men have been given the baby by its father. We'll find him if it takes a day or a month or a week. These men have the, the law on their side. 
Yes, sir. Come on, then. I'll take you to him. He lives on a farm about 30 miles from here. Well, much obliged. Look up there, way, way up there. You know what that is? That's a chicken hawk. You know what a chicken hawk does? A chicken hawk will catch and kill your chickens. You got any? You're bigger, I'm gonna get you a gun, and you and me will go hunting those chicken hawks together. <laughs> Country. Howdy. You remember me? Yes, I do. How you been? Pretty fair. How you been? Is that your boy there? That Jackson and Longstreet? Yes, it is. Say hello to Mr. Isham, son. Hey, boy. These here are your wife's brothers. These are the Thorpe boys. Howdy. 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 What can I do for you? Uh, we came for the boy. What boy? My boy. Well, you can't have him. He's my boy. He's our sister's boy. His father gave him to us. He belongs to us. He's our kin. He's my boy. We're going to have him. Run, son. Run to your granddad out in the fields. Wait. Oh. But catch that boy and take him to the surf. And that's why it taken me so by surprise. I'm all right now. Pardon me. Yeah? I want to interview a tuna. Are you a tuna? No. I'm an octopus. Go on. You are too a tuna. Okay, I'm a tuna. What's on your mind? Do you tuna sort of uh, resent being caught? Why should we? It's our destiny, man. But naturally, we want to make the big time. Big time? Star kissed. Only the best tuna get took by star kissed. It's a status thing, you know? Oh. Take Frankie over there. Note the dull eyes. The hopeless attitude, the starkest people threw him back. That's too bad. Well, some got it, some don't got it. You know what I mean? Hey, watch this. Hey! Sorry, Charlie. Only the best tuna get to be starkest. Insist on starkest. Tell him Charlie sent you. <laughs> Petrie left his farm the day the Thorpe boys took little Jackson and Longstreet away. Petrie was gone five years. And if his daddy knew where he was, he sure wouldn't tell us. Hello, Papa. Petrie. How you been? Pretty good. 
How you been? Pretty fair. You hungry? Beans on the stove. Thank you. Where'd you go, Fentry? I dug some cotton in Texas, some sugar fields in Louisiana. I don't know where all. John, I seen Jackson and Longstreet. I was over at Frenchman's Bend last month, and I heard where he was living at. He living on a cotton farm with his uncles. I rode my mule over there when I heard, and I seen him. I passed him on the road. I knowed it was him. His hair was just as black and shiny. I said, hi there. Jackson Longstreet. Remember me? No, sir, he says. My name ain't Jackson and Longstreet. He says. It's Thorpe. Buck Thorpe. He's eight years old now, son. Fine looking boy. I didn't have no notion as to who I was. Me seen you coming home. Where all you been? Texas. I don't know where all. Fentry. Yes, sir. What happened to him? What happened to who? The boy. Your papa never tell us. Did he die? What boy? Well, sir. Twelve years passed, and if they ever mentioned that boy again, we never heard of him. Hey, you folks working your ground already? Mine's still too cold. Guess where I was, Mr. Fentry? The Frenchman's been past that old sawmill you used to work in. They've been having a heap of excitement up that way. That so? Mm-hmm. A young bully named Buck Thorpe showed up. He must be a terror the way folks talk. Fights, drinks, and raises all kind of things. What was his name? Buck Thorpe. He must be a terror the way they tell it. Say, could one of y'all come over to my place and give me a hand for a half a day tomorrow and the next? I can. Sure, thank you. What day you gonna come? It'll be long tomorrow. Much obliged. I'll be expecting you. I'm going over to Frenchman's Bend. Why? I just want to have a look at him. Get out of here. Go on, get out of here. Who is that old man, Buck? Shoot, I don't know. I never seen him before. So a couple of days later, Book Right killed Buck Thorpe. Of course, I never could associate all those names. Thorpe meant nothing to me. 
But I ran into Isham quick the day that Fentry hung your jury, and he kind of straightened it all out for me. Of course he wasn't going to vote Bookwright free. Of course he wasn't. Well, I would have. I would have feed him because Buckthorpe was bad and... No, you wouldn't, son. No, it wasn't Buckthorpe the adult, the man. Jackson Fentry would have shot that man just as quick as Bookwright did if he'd been in Bookwright's place. No, it was because somewhere in that debased and brutalized flesh which Bookwright slew, there still remained, though, not the spirit, maybe, but at least the memory of that little boy, that Jackson Long Street Fentry even though the man the boy became didn't know it. And only Fentry did. And you wouldn't have freed him either. Don't you ever forget that. Never. The lowly and invincible of the earth to endure and endure and then endure. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow. Of course he wasn't going to vote book right free. Somewhere there waiteth in this world of ours for one lone soul. Another lonely soul, each chasing each through all the weary hours and meeting strangely at one sudden goal. Then blend they like green leaves with golden flowers into one beautiful and perfect whole. And life's long night is ended and the way lies open onward to eternal day. Edwin Arnold. Words about next week's Playhouse 90 in just a moment. Wish I were a man. You? Why? My skin, Mother. Well, your skin's lovely. It's so dainty, delicate. Too delicate. I'm almost afraid to wash with anything that makes me feel really clean. Try this. It's something new. Zest isn't new. This Zest is. Just out. See? Improved. New, improved Zest. New, soft aqua color. New, soft fragrance, too. Smells mild. Zest is mild. So mild, even delicate skin can dare to feel really clean. Clean, fresh, the way Zest makes you feel. Clean, fresh, with all-day deodorant action. So give in to that good, clean feeling. With Zest, even delicate skin can dare to feel really clean. How's your delicate skin now? Wonderful. Now. Now, a new, improved Zest. Hollywood. Center of television, motion picture production, the goal of everyone with the desire to achieve in the world of entertainment. <laughs> For the purposes of next week's story, that could be Wall Street, Madison Avenue, Pittsburgh Steel Mill, bridge over a gorge in South America. It's a symbol of achievement and recognition. And with that recognition, there also come many changes, welcome and unwelcome. Nobody would refuse the rewards of success, the recognition, financial ability to afford things that he could not before. But I can promise you, as the rewards are greater, so the demands are greater. And there's always a change, sometimes a violent one. Decisions have to be made that never existed before. Sometimes the challenge is greater to a wife, a friend, than to the person who has made the achievement. That's the story of next week's Playhouse 90, The Velvet Alley, by Rod Serling, starring Art Carney, Leslie Nielsen,
Catherine Bard, Jack Klugman, Benita Granville, George Boscovec, and Alexander Scurvy. Got a cigarette, buddy? You tired? Do you want to go home? I will be after you tell me what went on, Ernie. In here? Yes, I mean in here. Well, I decided to sign with the Chambers Agency. They're going to represent me. Wait a minute. I don't want a scene, understand? No scene, I assure you. Then grow up, will you? Face things. For example, face the fact that tonight I got represented. You didn't get represented tonight, Ernie. You got raped. Next week, Playhouse 90 presents The Velvet Alley by Rod Serling. Until then, good night. This portion of Playhouse 90 has been brought to you by Zest, now new and improved. Star Kiss Tuna, the all-prime tuna. And Push Button Lilt, the only foam home permanent. This is Dick Joy speaking. This program was pre-recorded. Playhouse 90 is a CBS Television Network production.